let's talk a little bit about generic name brand, how drugs get to the market, why some drugs don't have a name brand or a generic. Let's, let's just talk about the whole thing. So what's the difference between these two drugs? Nothing. They're both diphenhydramine. If you read the ingredients, diphenhydramine oral solution, diphenhydramine oral solution. Well, maybe this one's better because maybe it's more concentrated because this one's $9 and this one's a dollar. Well, let's look. Let's see, where is, there it is. Uh, let's see, diphenhydramine. 12.5 milligrams to 5 milliliters. 12.5 milligrams to 5 milliliters. Nope, they're the same concentration. One is name brand, one is generic. So are they really the same? Or is one really better? Well, let's talk about that. The FDA says that the actual ingredient in there has to be the same. So they are the same, but they can't be exactly the same. Oh my gosh, you're making my head hurt. What do you mean? Okay, so the drug is the same, but other things don't have to be the same. Let me draw a picture. I like pictures. So. And how about all right? Wine glass, beer can. Get the picture. Active ingredient. Okay, are these the same? No, are these the same? Yes. These are both, let's say, 7% alcohol. Just picking one, sorry guys. Is it gonna do the same thing? Uh-huh, if you drink enough. But are they exactly the same? Uh-uh. Just like a generic and a name brand, they have the exact active ingredient, but they may have different emulsifiers, different flavors, different bonding agents, do you see? Different colorings, different flavorings, but the actual active ingredient is the same. So that's the difference. Now, does it make a difference if I take this one or this one if I have allergies or whatever? No, no difference. But there are a few drugs where it can make a difference. Usually those are hormone replacements. Um, things like levothyroxine for thyroid. Um, certain things like that can on some people. 95% of the time, save money by generic. My opinion there, okay? Let's talk about research and development. How does a drug come to the market? And why aren't there generics in every drug? Well, it takes research and development. It takes 10 years and $1 billion to have a drug come to market. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot of failures in that time before a drug comes to market. And it costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of smart people doing a lot of smart things for a long time. Having said that, after spending a billion dollars in 10 years to get a drug to market, they need to recap some of the, that money, right? They need, otherwise, who would ever come up with a new drug? No one, because there'd be these people laying back here waiting for you to bring your brand new drug that you spent all that time and all that money on 
to market and then they'd buy one pill and replicate it just like you and bring it to market as generic. So the FDA says, good job making that new drug. Now nobody else can make it, nobody else can bring one to market for X amount of years. Anywhere from seven to 30 years. If it's something absolutely mind-boggling, a true discovery, it might be 20, 30 years that no one else can make it. If it's a drug that they just kind of revamped a little bit, it might be five or seven years, you see? So that's how the FDA protects them so they can put money back, so they can pay off that one billion it took and put money away for when um, they get sued. You know, the commercial comes on, have you or a loved one been hurt by XYZ drug? Call 1-800-BAD-DRUG. Mm -hmm. They gotta put money away for that too. So those poor little drug companies. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's how drugs come to market. And that's why there won't be a generic for many years and then all of a sudden there's a lot of generics. And what happens to the price of the drug when the generics come out? Generally speaking, that's usually what happens. Um, let's look at some of these. Now, generics don't have to, the, usually the drug won't be capitalized. Name brand, it's always capitalized. However, here's a generic one that is capitalized, so you can't always take that. That's aspirin. Oh, looky here, here's a name brand aspirin. See, bare aspirin, this is a generic aspirin, see that? What's the difference between this and this? Nothing, they're the same drug. If you're not sure, read the darn label, guys, read it. Acetaminophen, 500 milligrams. Is this one extra strength or not? Acetaminophen, 500 milligrams, there you go. They're the same. What's the difference between this Advil liquid gel, this is ibuprofen, and a generic ibuprofen? Nothing. Except as far as the active ingredient goes, nothing. Just some buffers and flavorings and so forth, things like that. Here's another aspirin. So here's three different aspirins. Now some of these are different dosages and you have to watch that but same active ingredient. Here's an example. These are all the same. All the same. Different forms, huh? These are what? Solutions, and this is a tablet, yeah. Some drugs will never, unless, unless the courts change their minds, will never become generic. And those are our brand new biologics. The biologics such as Humira, Otesla, those kind of drugs, um, Tecfidera, they are biologics. They're cells that are grown in, um, it's, you know what I think, I think of it like sourdough or friendship bread, where you make your, you make your starter and then you keep pulling off. And that's what it is. They grow these cells in the lab and then they just keep pulling them off and making the drug and then it grows more and they pull it off. And so the drug companies argued to the courts, our drug can never ever have a generic because there can never be one just like it because ours were made from living organisms and no two living organisms can be just exactly alike. So if you wanna know why insurance is high, a lot of it has to do with drug prices, at least part of it, and why are drug prices high? This kind of stuff. But here we are. So um, some drugs will never be generic, evidently, at least now, the way the courts are. And um, with that in mind, they'll always be very expensive. Do you know how much Humira is a year? 60 grand. Think about that. You know, Tecfidera and Glenya are biologics that are oral. They're pills. Don't drop it. You may be giving some of these, and sometimes that one pill is a hundred, two hundred, five hundred dollars. 
Yeah, make sure your resident's there, make sure they're ready to take their med, and don't drop it, don't throw it away. Make sure you do your due diligence on that because some of them are very expensive nowadays. Thanks.